Because I believe that God is a God that he can do something by this time tomorrow. So I'm not going to wait to give him praise. I expect that all is well, not some of the time, but all the time. So when we know something about a person and we know that they're consistent, if there, if there any other way than consistent, then we have to be concerned. Amen. Let me say it like this. If you don't see me happy, something, ain't, something is seriously wrong with Pastor Reynolds. Amen. Because you know me to be happy every time you see me. If, you, if, if I stop talking about blessing folk, you know something is wrong. Because consistency, it gives people a different perspective of who you are. So when we know who God is and we know his attributes, it changes the way we see him. So tonight I want to talk about who he is. Somebody ought to say amen to that. I want to give you some names that you need to familiarize yourself with. Because when you go through life, you need to know that the God you serve, he's in it with you. And he's not going to leave you in it. He's going to bring you through it. Somebody shout amen. amen. I am coming out of this stuff. Amen. As a matter of fact, those of us who walk by faith, we declare we're already out. Amen. Oh, glory to God in heaven. So go with me in your Bible to the book of Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Because the first thing you need to know about God and the first name you need to know is that God is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. I say God is my provider. Amen. amen. You a whole bunch of folk quote that scripture, but they really don't believe it. Amen. I say they really don't believe it. That God can provide for you. Amen. That he's consistent in what he does. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Somebody shout, God is my provider. Is my provider. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So the Bible says that God is our Jehovah Jireh. You know the story. Abraham went to offer up his son Isaac. Somebody ought to be glad about this. And he went to kill him, went to burn him up as a burnt offering. And when God saw that Abraham trusted him. See, when you go through stuff in life, God is looking at your trust level. Do you have a trust level that's up here or do you trust him down here? Do you trust him some of the time or do you trust him all the time? Well, Abraham trusts that if I burn this boy up, God is going to have to bring him back from the ashes. And God saw that Abraham was willing to trust him. And he said, Abraham, stay your hand. Don't touch your son. And he calls a ram to come out the bush. I want to declare to somebody tonight that God has a ram in the bush for you. He will provide everything that you need. The ram may be a job. The ram may be, come on somebody, it may be financial stability. It may be a promotion or a new job. Job. But I'm declaring tonight that God is your Jehovah Jireh and he has a ram in the bush for you. Somebody give him praise for it. Number two, God is Jehovah Nisei, the Lord my banner. What does that mean? Go with me to Exodus 17, that God, he reigns in victory. Woo, somebody ought to be glad about that. I say somebody ought to be glad about that. That God, he reigns in victory. That he does not lose a battle. Amen. Come on, somebody. That anything come up against my God, it will not be victorious. That God has already defeated everything on our behalf. Amen. Watch what it says. And Moses built an altar. Somebody ought to say amen. Oh, glory to God. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. Moses built an altar and called the name Jehovah Nisi. In other words, God say, hey, God gave me the victory right here. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. Do you have anything that you can relate to? Anything that can remind you of a victory that God gave you? Boy, when I walked out that hospital yesterday, God, I thank you 
that you are my Jehovah Nisei. Amen. And I may not be able to build an altar right here, but I could be an altar. I could walk around and show folks that you still giving victories. Come on, somebody. That you reign in victory. That no sickness nor disease can take me out of here because you are my Jehovah Nisei. Number three, he's Jehovah Shimon. Jehovah Shema. The Lord that is there. Go to Ezekiel 48. He's the God that's always there. Somebody shout, he's always there. Come on, everybody shout, he's always there. When I was in Bella Hospital, 55 days laying in Bella Hospital on my back, I had some very frustrating days in there. I hadn't even left to get chemo yet. I was laid up in that hospital waiting to be discharged, to be sent to MD Anderson in Houston. But I'm telling you, it was some tough nights in that hospital. I had some very frustrating days in that hospital. My God, thank you, Lord. But every time I felt like giving up, every time I felt like throwing in the towel, God showed me that he was right there with me. It was around about 18,000 measures. In the name of that city from that day should be called the Lord is there. The Lord showed me by sending messengers. I believe they was angels. Amen. They may have been working in that hospital. But every time I had a frustrating day, every time it looked like things was going wrong, God would send somebody in that room to encourage me. He was letting me know, son, I'm in here with you. I will always be there. Some of y'all need to hear this, that if he walk out on you, your husband, or if she walk out on you, your wife, or if they cut your paycheck, or whatever may happen in your life that caught you by surprise, it did not catch God by surprise. He will always be there for you. He'll be there in the good days. He'll be there in the not so good days. He'll be there when all is well. He'll be there when all is hell. He's a God that will never leave you. Somebody ought to be glad about it. And he's a God that will never forsake you. Number four, he's Jehovah to Siskanu, the Lord our righteousness. Oh, that's good news right there, y'all. I say that's good news because the Bible says, go with me real quick to Jeremiah 23. The Bible says that the Lord who knew no sin, he became sin that I might be the righteousness of God. But watch what it says here in Jeremiah 23. Behold, the days come, said the Lord. That I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his day, Judah shall be saved, Israel shall dwell safely, and this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord. Somebody shout, the Lord. All righteousness. He's all righteousness. Glory to God. Go with me to Judges 6. He's Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom. The Lord our peace. That's, a, that's one everybody need to learn right there. Because I'm telling you, life can deal you some stuff, but if you don't have peace, the devil take you out. I come here to tell you tonight that God will give you peace in the midst of any storm. And the Lord said unto him, peace be unto thee. Somebody shout, fear not. Fear not. Somebody shout, fear not. fear not. Thou shall not die. Amen. Oh, my God. I'm going to give myself a hand clap right there. <laughs> Woo. I remember when they brought me to the doctor in Baylor. They had to take me to see a radiologist who wanted to perform radiology on me. And I remember when he told me and Vicky, we were sitting there in the, in the room with him. And um, he said, we finally have concluded that what you have is a cancerous tumor. I said, OK. He said, tell you what, here's what we might need to do. We can cut your leg off. That's not an option. Somebody shout amen. amen. Because if we cut it off, we can almost assure that it won't come back. Not an option. He said, but we, we will go ahead and let you know that you have what's called a sarcoma. You have cancer. And I remember looking at Vicky. And I remember Vicky looking at me. 
And for about 30 seconds, the enemy tried to bring fear on us. Because when you hear cancer, the next thing you hear is we don't know how long you're going to last. But I'm so grateful to God that I had a relationship with God. And I knew that the same God that brought me out of the disease of addiction and the same God that brought me out of the disease of promiscuity and the same God that brought me out the disease of sin was the same God that was going to bring me out the disease of cancer. And right there, when he gave me that word, I said, peace unto God. I shall not be in fear. I believe that my God, he can bring me through this thing. He give you peace. And the Lord said unto him, peace be unto you. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there up unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it is yet, come on somebody, it's called Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, I'm going to testify that God, he visited me. And there in that hospital in Dallas, Texas, I may not have could have built the altar. One day I may go back. I may go back and build an altar. Everybody else got altars in there. All these other people donating altars. I may go give me an altar there to let the world know that God will visit you and he'll heal you and give you peace. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Ah, somebody. Oh, my God. I don't know about y'all. But the Lord is a healer, y'all. I say the Lord is a healer. And I know some of y'all, these names don't mean much to you because you've never been through some of this stuff. But you better know it, amen. Not only know how to say it, but you better know how to believe it because there's a great possibility that the devil may attack your body. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God is a God that heals. I say God is a God that heals. I said one more time for somebody that may be watching, the Lord can heal you. He can heal cancer. He can heal diabetes. He can heal upper respiratory infections. He can heal heart failure. They told me that I would have neuropathy for the rest of my life, but the Lord has healed my hands. Oh, y'all not hearing me. I said, the Lord has healed my hands. And I believe that the more I lift them up and the more I gave him praise, the more he put healing in my body. And the Bible says that we heal from the crown of our head to the sole of my feet. I'm going to testify tonight that I have not been able to have real good feeling in my feet. But the other day, Lord Jesus Christ, I, I had an ingrown toenail. And all y'all not hearing me. And I felt it. For the very first time, you know, it may have been painful, but it was a blessing to me. Because they say I wouldn't be able to feel nothing in my feet. And boy, when he got the pulling on it, I felt the pain. I said, thank you, Lord. You say you heal us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. He's a healer. They say you won't feel it. They say you won't feel nothing in your feet. And I'm telling you, man, that thing was so painful. I said, Lord, I just want to thank you. I didn't thank you for the pain. I thank him that I felt it. You're not hearing me today. I said, I thank him that I felt it. I said, I thank him that I felt it. That first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. I had to go to a foot doctor, amen, because I couldn't even walk, amen. That thing hurt so bad. I said, Lord, I just want to give you praise that I could feel it. But I'm getting this thing removed. Amen. You've already shown me that you healed me. I don't want to pain no more. The Lord is a Lord that heals. I don't know who's going through a sickness in your body or sickness in your mind. But the Lord will heal you. I said, the Lord will heal you. He's Jehovah Rapha. I declare tonight, glory to God in heaven, that who's ever dealing with a sickness or disease, I speak healing over you right now. God can heal you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I, I declare that wherever you are, that you are lay hands on your body. Somebody not hearing me. And the Bible says you ought to declare healing over your body. 
Watch what it says in Exodus. He said, if thou would diligently hearken, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and would do that which is right in his sight, and would give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases. He's talking to, he talking to those in the law. I will put none of these. I got to make sure I clarify that. Because in the law, disobedience caused God to send his wrath. But we thank God that God loved us enough that he sent Jesus, glory to God. He sent Jesus on the cross. And Jesus died on the cross that we are already healed. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord. For I am the Lord. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Go with me to Genesis 14. He is El El Young, the most high God. There is no God like our God. I say there is no God like our God. I say there is no God like our God. Not only is he a healer, but he's a mighty God. Amen. There's no God that can compare to our God. I'm not serving no other God. I'm serving a true and living God. My God is not dead. My God is alive. Come on, somebody. Watch what it says. Genesis 14, 20. Bless and bless be the most high God which had delivered thine enemies into my hands. And he give and gave him tithe of all. Boy, I don't want to spend more time on that. But that right there alone ought to motivate you to give the tithe. When God deliver your enemies, you ought to empty your pockets. Amen. Y'all not hearing me. Number, number eight. I'm almost done, y'all. He's El Shaddai. Go to Genesis 17, verse number one. He's El Shaddai. Let me, let me once again talk to somebody that may be challenging your body. God is a healer. You will live and you shall not die. Somebody shout amen. I say you should live. Don't be in fear of dying. I mean, don't be in fear of dying. Because to die is to live, number one. But don't, don't, be, don't think that what you're going through is going to take you out of here. That disease won't take you out of here. Amen. I told my oncologist that I'm dying from something, but it won't be cancer. Amen. I said, this won't kill me. I, I, I'm going to die from long life, a hundred and some years, amen. amen. But this disease should not take me out of here. You got to be real bold to talk like that. Somebody shout amen. You got to really know your God to talk like that. A lot of people won't talk like that when they're going through because they're afraid of it might come back. It shall not return a second time. I, I'm talking to somebody right now. It shall not return a second time. And the Lord already healed you of that. He's already taken that away from you. You need to be in, uh, in, in gladness and not in sadness. Don't go to your doctor listening for a negative report. Go to your doctor in great expectation of God doing the miracle. Come on. He's doing the signs and he's doing the wonders. Come on, somebody. Don't go there with this attitude of pity. Go there with this attitude of praise. Go there with an expectation that God has already visited my tomorrow. He's already been into my next year. He's already planned my 2025. He knows what I'm going to be doing in 2040. I'm not trying to leave out of here right now. I have too much work to do. You got to open your mouth and you got to declare what you want from God. God is just not going to give you anything. You got to ask of him. Lord, I ask you for at least 99 years. Come on, somebody. After that, Lord, you can send a chariot to scoop me up out of here. But at least give me 99. It'd take a lot of courage to talk like that. Well, they said they only gonna give you six months. They told Dodie Osteen they wasn't gonna give her but a few weeks. She just celebrated her 86th birthday. So don't tell me that God won't hear you. They counted her out, but God counted her in. Who glory to God. 
He's El Shaddai. Genesis 17. Somebody shout, I'm not going anywhere. We're in the process of, of building a building. Amen. I say we're building a building. Amen. And I'm going to be around here to see every piece of concrete laid, every piece of steel lifted. I'm going to be around here to see every piece of sheet rock put up, every piece of carpet, every mile of electricity run. I'm going to be here to see the roof put on top, the landscape put out on the front of the building. I'm going to be here to see it all happen. I'm not going nowhere. Somebody shout amen. We going to raise the money. Either God going to do it. Come on, somebody. Or he going to bless us to do it. And if you out there, you got about $5 million that you want to sow into this ministry, we accept it. Text 77977. If a man could hold up a sign, come on, somebody, and raise $3 million for some beer, surely I could raise up a sign and raise $5 million for a building. I'm declaring that God raised up somebody to give us $5.5 million to build a building. Now run and tell that. If they can raise money for the world, surely the church folk ought to be able to raise money for a building to glorify God. I'm grateful to God. Now, to that young man's credit who raised that $3 million for that beer, he gave it to, you know, a charitable organization. And um, when you sold the $5.5 million into this ministry, you giving it to a charitable organization. We're going to build a building for inner city people to come and learn skills. We're going to build a building where we can train and develop young people to have, you know, not just skills in the workforce, but learn how to be good husbands and be good wives. We're going to teach young men how to have good self-image and good self-esteem. We're going to take young women and we're going to train them up in the way they should go so when they get old, they don't depart from it. We're going to have systems in place to train our seniors how to use computers and how to tap into the world wide web. We're going to have all kinds of arts and all kinds of things for our young people. We're going to take the community, but we need the building. And if you got the money, you ought to sow the money into the building. Somebody shout amen. 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 Woo, glory to God. God is not giving you nothing if you're not doing nothing. So I'm declaring he raising up somebody. To give us five point five million dollars, I had a young man call me. He 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 go he does he's a, he's an engineer. He's building buildings all over Houston. He called me yesterday. He say he say Pastor, when you get ready to build a building, I want to be the engineer. Amen. He didn't say he wanted to be paid for it. He said, Pastor, I want to do the engineering work for you. I want to design it, Pastor. I want, I want to, I want to get, I want you to know that I'm in this thing with you. We already see in favor. Amen. Somebody shout, we already see in favor. We don't have no money, amen. But I'm not interested in what we don't have. I'm only concerned about what we do have. And we have God that's called Jehovah Jireh. And he can provide every need for us. Somebody say amen. And if you want to be a part of this building project, they're going to put the text code on the scene. You should sow into this. Amen. You should sow $1,000, $100, whatever the case may be. But we are building the building. I say we are building the building. And everybody that laughed at us and everybody said it wasn't going to happen, God going to let them live long enough to see it come to pass. Amen. I say God going to let them live long enough for them to see it come to pass. Whew, glory to God. It was so funny, me and Vicky was talking about the building today. Uh, we were just riding around and I told Vicky, I said, Vicky, when we hire our staff, because we're going to need staff. See, I'm already seeing the future, amen. Uh, I'm, all, I'm not going to be no one-man show. We need secretary. We need administrators. We need facility managers. We need transportation detail managers. We need child care managers. We need all these people to help us with the new church and all the things like that. I gave Vicki the schedule of what our work day was going to look like. She's watching. She can verify I told her this. This is not something I'm making up because she know, and I talk about this almost every day about 
got this building. And I say, Vicky, this is how our work schedule going to look. We're going to work from 8 a.m., I think from 7 to 2 every day. 2 o'clock, you off. You're gone home at 2 o'clock. I say, you will not work on Monday. Nobody will not work on Monday. Somebody shout amen. And if a holiday fall on Monday, I told Vicky, you're going to be off that Tuesday. Amen. I say, then you're going to get, you know, 401k. We're going to search for somebody to give us a 401k plan to help our members invest their money, to help our workers invest their money. Somebody shout amen. And I told Vicky that you would be, you, you, it would be a rule on the campus that you have to serve with joy and serve with happiness. Because I want a workplace that's filled with laughter and filled with fun. We're only going to have a four-day work week. I say those who were going to get paid hourly, we will start them out at 1750 an hour. 1750 an hour. That would be the starting for hourly employee. See, I'm already seeing this thing in my head. Amen. Because I believe it's going to happen. I know some people can't think like that. But I'm telling you right now, we are building a building. And we will have employees. Somebody shout Amen. Jehovah El Shaddai. Amen. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Come on, somebody celebrate the Lord. Amen. Amen. Say somebody celebrate the Lord. Amen. Somebody give the Lord praise. So if you're watching us by way of streaming, thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to give into this ministry, you can do so by texting give to TLC to 77977. If you're a member of this church, I want you to mark your calendars for November the 14th, I believe, right here at the um, City Center, for the City Center. It's Vision Night, Vision 2020 Night. Uh, we will lay the vision out for 2020. We will come and receive our new uniforms. We receive our new marching orders because we're not going into the 2020 the same way we left 2019. Let me also encourage those of you who are watching. If you'd like to participate in our end of year strong seed on November the 10th, I believe. I believe it's November the 10th. Somebody help me out. The second Sunday, November, we will, November the 10th, we will uh, raise over $50,000 for our um, building and for our, uh, praise the Lord, and for our capital expansion. No church that will make it um, financially, um, make it without having capital expansion um, campaigns. Every church do it. Amen. It's not something we just doing because we don't have nothing to do. We need to end the year strong. Amen. We need to end the year strong because we do not want to go into the next year looking the same way we did this year. If you are a partner with this ministry and let me thank many of you. Some of you have already sown a thousand dollar seed. Some of you have already sown into um, 2020 vision. Let me thank you for doing that. I want to applaud you for thinking enough of us and to soar into the vision to those members who already have given. Thank you for giving already. We know that that, that month um, is the last quarter of the month. And we know that, you know, that at the fourth quarter is the most critical quarter in anything we do. I'm still believing God for three people. Three people to give a $5,000 seed or three families to say, yes, pastor, I'm one of those that will give that 5000 If you are, you can let me know, amen, by texting me or whatever the case may be. And um, we will count that as done. Amen. I have committed to giving $10,000. I've already given $2,500. i am going to give the rest of it on that day. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. And um, praise the Lord. And so if you're going to do that, you can help us do so by following the text code on the scene. There's a, on the screen, there's a drop down box. I believe it is, Grace. There's a drop down box that says finish your year strong. May the God of all grace bless you. May he flood your life with abundance. If you're not born again and you'd like to give your life to Christ, you can simply repeat this prayer to me. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Your word says if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raise your son Jesus from dead, that thou shalt be saved. If you repeated that simple prayer, welcome 
welcome to the family of God. May God bless you. May he lead you to a good church so you can learn how to be taught, trained, and developed so you can live out the rest of your days pleasing to God. If you're in the Austin, Texas area and you repeat that prayer, you don't have a church, I'd love to be a pastor. Join us at the Love Center. God bless you. See you this Sunday. Amen. Give our streaming audience a big hand clap. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where let's offer.